All right, and you can't really see me, but that's okay because we're just heading home now. And uh, wow, what a crazy, 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 crazy great day. Oh my God, what a party this was. Uh, okay, so in the parking lot and my vehicle did not sink <laughs> into this new sand that I parked in. And uh, what a crazy great night. I don't know what else to say. Uh, where do I start? Like uh, the bass player that was here tonight, one of the hosts, uh, all I can say is this guy is the party animal. I figured it out scientifically. Every time this guy shows up, the place goes nuts. But there was a lot going on tonight. Uh, so much going on tonight. Uh, what a fantastic night. What a fantastic, fantastic night. I'll get to my performance part of it. <laughs> I was the uh, kickoff guy in one way. But there was a few things happening tonight that was different. There was a uh, local that... Uh, wrote a song and made a video and it was called City Girl and uh, oh there's my friend <laughs> like, like what the hell is that racket uh, I'm gonna get a little bumpy here the town of Wakefield's always pretty bumpy okay okay so the song was called City Girl and what was the artist's name but anyway he's a guy i've seen him in there a few times and of course everybody in the video you kind of know because or you might not know them personally but you you know them in the sense that they, you see them in the uh, video or in, in the bar and he basically did the video filmed everything locally around here he announced uh oh i guess about a month or so ago that he was looking for people to make the video and it was a good song it was called city girl and uh, I was talking to the two guys promoting it, and uh, it's going to go on CD Baby and all that. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, just yell out City Girl. Just remember to yell that out. So, uh, and, of course, everybody's hooting and hollering when they see, like, all the local places around here, uh, you know, on, on, oh, look at that little skunk. Oh, man, you're going to die if you stay there. Don't play on the road, little skunk. <laughs> I don't want to have to squish a skunk with this thing. I mean, I really don't want to have to have a skunk smell, dead skunk smell on my... Yeah, it's going to the middle of the road. I'll, I don't want to have to play that song while I'm driving home. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, the, the thing is this. Um, it was a weird night because, first off, I've never, ever seen it that packed in there before. But that's because there was a CD release or maybe not a CD release, but a video release. So, the host came in. Um... He has his six-string jazz bass there. And the guy's a really good player. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And then the, the drummer, this drummer, he's a younger guy. I've seen him play a few times. He's really, really, really good. Uh, but these guys, you know, they're always jamming together or whatever. You know, there's a lot of these local musicians. They just, you know, just jump in and out of bands together all the time. And they get up. They do a couple of songs. It's all instrumentals. Uh, Claire brought out her electric guitar tonight, but I didn't film it because I know she doesn't really like to be filmed uh, and stuff like that. But she was really rocking it. She had a 1987 Fender Stratocaster flower pattern, which is based on one of, I believe, the 60s or late 50s Strat patterns. And basically, in a nutshell, uh, I hadn't seen one of those since probably about the, the 90s or so. And I asked her, I said, I said, I haven't seen one of those about the 90s. Is that yours? She goes, yeah. Played through a nice Vox AC30 or AC50 there. Uh, that woman can play. She is very impressive. I wish I, wish I could uh, show you some of her stuff. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So she was just, you know, just just wailing on the guitar. You know, uh, we had drums, bass, and stuff like that. So it's always lively. Uh, they played about three, four songs. Then they tried to get. Uh, they have a what you call it, a white uh, white screen in there that they can pull down. Uh, you know, just to, to do like a, like basically a projector screen stuff. And I don't know what happened. They went to turn the lights down and then all of a sudden they, they couldn't, they hooked the laptop to the projector, but they couldn't get the projector to work. So they jumped ahead and uh, old Ken went up and did his cowboy poetry. And it was a really packed place. So it's hard to kind of hear tonight, uh, uh, whatever. And I... I did well, but I don't know if everybody could quite hear what I was doing. It sounded like everybody did, uh, but they said, yeah, there was like, they, they're like, oh, well, I guess that instrument isn't plugged in. And there was a couple of us tonight that didn't have plugged in, but we weren't used to it. Like there had to be all, well over a hundred people in the bar, maybe even 150 out of everybody outside. So that was the biggest crowd I've played in front of in a long time. 
So I was very, very happy about that. I was like, oh, geez, I hope I'm, uh, you know, able to be heard, right? And um, so Ken goes up, he does his thing, and then I go up. Well, they tried to get the video going, they couldn't get it going, so then they pulled me up. And I had my Lion Ed violin, so I introduced the Lion Ed violin. I was going to do a little bit more of a, a sideshow of, uh, you know, leading up the songs or whatever, but because there was like 11 people on the list tonight, 11 people, wow, like uh, a lot of people just ended up leaving because they, 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 there was no way they were going to go up there. Five is like a pack night, you know what I mean? And <laughs> 11 people went up, or wanted to go up. And uh, yeah, it was a great night. So I got some of them on, on video. It was just so good, you know, it was just so good. Uh, there was a, a drummer from Mexico, and he was doing like the samba blues, and then he was doing stuff like that. He was really, he was really on point, and uh, I think I only got one. But tonight, what was weird was it was almost all instrumentals tonight. It had a very uh, progressive blues mix, a uh, lot of Latin American sounding tonight. Uh, you know, but with, you know, one guy was playing the drum and the guitar at the same time. That was pretty cool. And then they, you know, they did um, uh, another guy. He, uh, you'll see the performance. He did a rendition of the Melaguena, uh really nicely done, really nicely done. Uh, I got think two of his, and uh, he was uh, basically uh, doing flamenco and, and Spanish guitar stuff. Very, very good. Very, 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 very good. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, a little on the quiet side, so with that many people in there. You know, it's, it's hard to hear even when you're miking, so that... But I, I thought I'd risk the uh, acoustic violin tonight, because I figured it was going to be, you know, rowdy today, but I was not expecting this. It, but again, the, the, the release party and everything like that. Talked to a lot of people, great night, lots of fun. I got up there, I did my Pirates of the Caribbean. I uh, shortened it a little bit just because I wanted to make sure that I uh, didn't get too fancy with it, because, you know, I, I, you know, I wasn't... But the only thing I was worried about was my violin not staying in tune. But it seemed to have picked up well. I don't think I had enough mids on the violin, but it's that, well, that's the thing when you mic an acoustic instrument, right? Uh, it was a different mic tonight. It wasn't really a great mid-range mic uh, in a lot of ways. So I think my the violin was just a little bit on the dark side and people couldn't, it wasn't quite projecting the way I wanted. I was hoping, uh, but people knew what I was playing and, and stuff like that. So the Rasputin song, I uh, went well. I mean, it was very cool to do it the way I did it. Evoluti's King. I, I tried to cut into that solo the best I could. Uh, I did okay with the solo, but I just couldn't get the volume out of it. Uh, so I'll have to try it again at another time. Uh, if it would have been a little bit quieter in there, I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining at all. I mean, I did uh, botch the lyrics a little bit because I was trying to concentrate a little bit too much on getting volume into the mic with my vocals and not to be too loud with my vocals and not too quiet with the violin, right? So I got a little distracted and I kind of jumped the lines a little bit. But otherwise, I played it well. I mean, I played it well. Uh, eh, if I would have had the electric violin, I'm pretty sure it would have been a lot of hoop, more hooting and hollering. Uh, everybody seemed to have liked it. Uh, but again, I guess some people were trying to be quieter uh, so that they can hear it, right? Um, I had a few musicians uh, uh, come up to me and I and say, wow, that was really cool, man. Like, real nice rendition there. Uh, too bad you didn't have the, the electric, right? Um, so, yeah, that violin is definitely uh, not a jam night violin for that reason. You really need a quieter room for it. Uh, that I'm going to have to find a way to get it mic'd. Uh, not mic'd, uh, actually get a pickup for it. If I did that, then yeah, I could bring it out. But I was showing, uh, I was showing a guy um, the night I was doing the Irish jigs with the ladies there. Uh, he was playing the bazooki, and we were, him and I were talking. And uh, I showed, so I, I said, "You'll appreciate this." So I showed him my violin and, and everything like that. And um, he it was like, "Whoa, wow, that thing!" Like when you look at the details on the thing, it's just it's it's a work of art, right? And he was just uh, he was kind of blown away by it, but he really liked what I did. But he gave me some. Uh, you know, inside baseball and, you know, things going on. And then there was this other guy, and I was, I was out talking to him for a while. Oh, wow, crazy moon out there tonight. Not a full moon, but um, it's a, like half yellow moon. 
orange move. That, that's crazy. Uh, but anyway, it's the latest I've stayed out so far. It's like it's almost one in the morning. Uh, the band's just stopped <laughs> a little while ago. Uh, but anyway, uh, me and this other guy, we were talking. I, I've talked to him before. Uh, and he was saying, oh, yeah, well, we jam over here and over here. And I'm, I'm trying to pin down all these local jam spots, right? And who's doing what and, you know, where to go and, and, and stuff like that. Because that's how I'm going to get my gigs, right? But then this young lad comes up to me. You might even hear it on uh, one, one of the uh, videos. Uh, he was like, hi, hey, dude. He goes, uh, what's your name? I said, Reg. He goes, he goes, great with the violin. He says, look, we're having a jamboree on Saturday. We'd love it if you could come and uh, bring whatever instruments you want. Uh, I kind of know where it is. I'll have to Google it again because I like I know the, the approximate area. Uh, but there's a couple of places that do do more like that are lo fairly local, which I like the idea because they're close by, right? But the idea is to become a working musician. Uh, it might be a ways away, but, you know, I'm just going to keep at it until I am. But what I like is the connections, because if I can't do the one-man band thing, maybe I get lucky and I meet somebody and say, you know what, we'd love to have a mandolin player or a fiddle player, even if you're not the best. We just need somebody, uh, somebody, in, uh, to, you know, to jump in. And most of these musicians are like me. You know, like they, they work, you know, and then, you know, they... They work enough to work to stay alive, and they, they dedicate the rest of their time to their music. And trust me, they, they, there's so much fulfillment out of that. I'm not saying you don't need money to live or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not stupid like that. I'm not one of those people. But what I'm saying is you can live comfortable within your means and get fulfillment in other ways. Uh, and the music thing, the sharing with the people, uh, the last guy I was just talking to there, the guy from East, the East Coast, him and I were talking about motorbikes and the TT races and small towns and just you know what a fun night you know what i mean just like i love i love that kind of stuff you know what i mean uh but what a night like it's just ah you just can't put a price tag on that uh, and uh i think i only drank three uh three coca coca colas tonight that's it but the place was packed uh, i had fun with the rasputin i really had fun with that one the evolutes king I gotta tell you, it was freaking hot in there, man. I was sweating my ass off uh, up on that stage, especially with that many people in the bar. Uh, the, my violin stayed in tune. It, it, she held up. Uh, he held up. He was happy to. He was happy to make noise tonight. I just wish it could have been a little bit more louder. And uh, yeah, whenever I get the money, I'm gonna have to get a because uh, I prefer the acoustic violins over the electric violin any day. Uh, so if I can get, but I got to get a good quality pickup for it to really, you know, people really, like one guy was saying, he goes like, he says, I couldn't really hear everything out of it, but he says, uh, the, like I suspected when I did the, the longer drawn out notes, he says, yeah, he says, it really, like it really hummed out, you know, like it, like it was, it gave the haunting sound that I thought it was going to do. Uh, the only thing is just, uh, the more detailed parts weren't quite as loud as I, and then, you know, I couldn't. I couldn't press any harder on the bow without collapsing the bridge, you know what I mean? Um, I had as much rosin on the bow as I could. It's just, you know, it's an acoustic instrument that's as loud as it's going to get, right? Even mic and the mic, that mic didn't really have the uh, mid-ranges I wanted. I went with one mic because I don't think they would have been able to mic the, the violin and the... Uh, ah, there's a soccer ball on the side of the road. Uh, woo, that baby the fuse around. woo -hoo. A lot of skunks out tonight. Jeez. I hope one didn't. I left my basement window open. Hopefully, one didn't spray. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, long story short, I had a lot of fun uh, tonight. I, I don't know if it would have been a better night with the mandolin, uh, volume-wise, probably. Uh, but um, I would say, like tonight, if I would have had the electric out, uh, the only thing I did have a little bit of a problem hearing where I was uh, on this second song. Not too bad. I, I sound. I think I was pretty well intonated. Um, I was a little on the hyper side, not nervous, but hyper. So I had to watch out for that. I don't think I played too fast at all. I didn't feel winded that way. But I felt like I really had to belt out the, the, the vocals and. and, and uh, I was trying to sing away from the mic because I'm loud enough vocal-wise, but to get that man voice, you know what I mean? 
uh, and try to make it dramatic and all that. Uh, it was fun. It was fun. And then everything after that was really upbeat and flamenco y and, 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 and all, you know, people dancing, and it was just so good. Um, but I, yeah, I'm going to have to work on the Evoluti King. I, like I say, it doesn't really matter that I bounced the lyrics a little bit uh, because nobody really knows the song, but. Uh, I was hoping I would have done a little bit better with the, uh, I, I repeated the first verse or something like that, because I kind of lost myself, uh, Try, like I say, trying to concentrate a little bit too, like a little distraction to throw you off, not making excuses, it's just it's what happens, uh, like I played well and everything like that, but it's like, it just when you can't quite hear perfectly, uh, it, it, you know, you, you can't, that's the thing, it's a one take wonder, right, so, other than that, uh, I was happy with everything I did. Uh, I just wish I would have been able to... Because uh, I, I, I won't say that I wish the crowd was a little bit quieter. No, 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 I love a rowdy crowd. That's, that's I mean, I'm the rowdy guy, you know what I mean? Um, I think I set the ball in motion in some ways for the, for the crazy night, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I'll, I'll take credit for that even if, you know, I think the drums and the bass and all that stuff... Uh, that, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was good. So acoustic violins, you know, I love bringing them out. Uh, this one's a little too precious to bring out on a regular basis. But the next time I bring out a violin, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll just have to go with the electric. Uh, which uh, don't get me wrong, I like that electric uh, Cremona 180. I have it's fun. It plays in tune very well. It's easy to tune. I got geared tuners on it, uh, on the bridge and on the, um, on the, uh, you know, on the headstock. So in that sense, yeah, it, it's the ultimate um, jam night uh, violin. It's a little on the heavy side, though. I prefer the acoustic, you know, the acoustic violin much more. So, I, but I, he just he can't. This a mandolin really projects well. Uh, with a mic in front of it, uh, so you can get away with the mandolin. But the violins, if they're a dark-sounding violin like that, uh, they uh, they just can't. It's not a volume issue. It's it's uh, the mid-range isn't high enough uh, for it to cut through. Where I think my 17, 13 Strad would cut through. Um, I just, it just, but it doesn't have the low ends. This thing has the low ends, and the low ends on this violin is just, I love it. You know. Uh, so it sounded good. Everything was a tune. I think I played well. Um, just I uh, couldn't get the volume. That that's the only that's the only thing. So not a bad night at all. Great night. I enjoyed it no matter what. I enjoyed playing it. I was in those uh, you know super poses the whole pretty much uh, you know um, uh, the uh, one guy adjusted readjusted my mic for me. Uh, I don't know if that was good or bad. He was trying to get the mic angled more towards the violin, but it, it, like I say, you got, you don't get a lot of time. You're not doing a, like a massive sound check or anything like that. So you kind of just go with what you got. But I kind of liked, uh, liked it anyway because, uh, you know, you got to do the, like I say, the uh, power poses, whatever. And I kind of wanted to do that anyway. So it's like, okay, well, that works. Um, yeah, so next week... I don't think it's going to be as crazy next week, uh, whatever. But Saturday, problem is, is I don't that, that, like. That's where, like I say, to fund these projects, you know what I mean. Another jam, like a jamboree, would be a lot of fun. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, the uh, and it is kind of flattering when that guy waited for about probably an hour after I got off the stage to find me, and he goes, he goes, I gotta go, but he says I've been waiting for you there so I could. Uh, uh, I got I got to read the paper at home, but it's for the jamboree for Saturday, and I'm like, well, you know, I got to be careful because I can't break the bank, right? You know, I'm not. Uh, I I am going to work Friday, but uh, you know, I, I still got bills to pay and stuff like that. But I, I think I would be a crazy man not to to seek out this jamboree. Looks like it's going to be an all day event, and uh, what have you, and because of that. Um, I could probably bring out the electric violin, my mandolin, and my flying V. I don't have a case for the flying V. 
I don't think I need to bring out an acoustic. Everybody there is going to bring out an acoustic. Uh, Jill, Jill showed up with her double bass. She was rocking the kazoo tonight. Uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, what about uh, Rob was on the ukulele. I was worried they weren't going to be able to get up there because they got there a little bit late. I mean, the list, I was like, uh, well, Claire put me on the list number one, uh, you know, musician act, and, uh, you know, right after Ken. I don't mind when I'm on, when I'm on the guitar, I prefer to play a little later because, you know, uh, the guitar tends to have a lot more drive to it, and I tend to play a lot more uppity up. Uh, but the mandolin, I don't mind where I go with the mandolin. It's my, my whole thing is, is uh, I like the, about the, the third to fourth position because that's when the bar seems to be most packed. Tonight, it didn't matter where you went. It was packed right through till about the second last uh, jam. And there was a lot of jams tonight. Like, I mean, lots of instrumentals. Um, and blues, jazz, funk, samba. Uh, you know, very, uh, very interesting night. But uh, tonight was like, really was about the instrumentals. I mean, there was so many instrumentals. I mean, people were playing, uh, like, uh, Paul uh, Drake Stone got up, you know, and he, uh, he was playing and singing at the same time. But it, like, most of the stuff was just these loose jam, loose jams, you know? Uh, it was just a good, good, good night. And then, you know, it was just the vibe was excellent. The vibe was excellent. Um, yeah, there's just that. But, uh, yeah, a jamboree, that would be, I think that would be a first for me. I don't think I've ever, no, lie, lie, sorry, I've done a couple of jamborees before. Um, yeah, so I'll see what that's about. Apparently there's uh, some old farmhouse that people meet and jam at, whatever. I like it too, uh, you know, uh, it was kind of cool because this guy, like, I mean, this guy is like, uh, you know, Danny Boy uh, kind of Irish, you know what I mean? Uh, he plays the bazooki, he plays the mandolin, he plays uh, guitar. And I've seen him play quite, he plays more traditional Irish music, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, he was telling me about some guy playing, you know, some kid when he was in Ireland, watching some kid play the bazooki, just just go, going to town on it and stuff like that. And, uh, and all the different things that he does with the bazooki and, and, and stuff like that. And that's a cool instrument too. It's basically um, um, two. No you got the mandolin, the uh, the mandola, and then you got the bazoo, uh, the the octave mandolin, then the bazooki or the the man uh, the mando uh, cello, which is like a gigantic mandolin, sort of uh, sort of speak. And uh, yeah, very 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 cool stuff, uh, but. He was like, wow, he says, when you got up there and he played, he says, I, I said, I know that the volume of the, the, the violin wasn't quite up to par that I was hoping for, but he goes, yeah, he says, I could hear it a bit. Pretty, he says, I could hear it well enough. And he says, I was trying to figure out what you were playing. And then he says, like, it sounded really familiar. And then when he, he says, when you broke into the chorus, he goes, oh my God. He says, he goes, somebody finally did something with that song. He says, nice fucking job. You know what I mean? We didn't say it that way, but he was like, nice job, you know, like with the, you know, uh, you know, Rasputin on the violin. He goes, and he goes to playing and singing, he goes, hats off to you. And that's what I was really working on tonight was playing the violin and singing at the same time. Um, I don't, some people, I think it's not the, whether I was a really great violinist or not, that's not what gets them. It's the idea that you're doing two things at once. Kind of like the guy tonight playing the drums and the electric guitar at the same time. I should have filmed it, but I was sitting talking to somebody else. Whatever, and I, I really didn't want to be rude or anything like that, so. <clears throat> but it was cool. It was very cool. You know, one instrument doesn't do it for you to play two. You know what I mean? At the same time, right? Uh, but one thing is that uh, <clears throat> was the idea of playing and singing at the same time. Um... It's it's not easy. It's not easy. And like he said, he says the violin. I go I said playing the violin's hard enough. I said he goes the violin. He goes it's impossible. He goes it's, it's like it's not hard. It's impossible. You know what I mean? So when you get a really good fiddle player, uh, and the one he works with is uh, that Eva uh, lady. Uh, you see her on the, in the jam nights from time to time. She's very good, but she's been playing violin since she was a kid. You know what I mean? So she she gets it. She knows how to play it. And, um, 
the uh, the thing is, is that you know, like there's no frets on it. You're either you're on or you're out. You know what I mean? Like it's the, the violin is there. It's a very unforgiving instrument. So to play it, play it in tune while singing, um, that's tough. It's tough, but it's fun. It's definitely fun. Uh, I love that line, Ed Violin. Uh, so hopefully someday I'll be able to afford a good pickup for it so that it can really get the shine on the stage. Uh, yeah, that, that thing needs to be in front of the I know it's, it's kind of a delicate instrument to be pulling out. And I was almost up to pitch too. So the nice thing too is that I was tuned not quite a half step low. Uh, and um, the thing is, is that I was tuned just a little bit below 440, right? Because the tuning peg on that, the E string just won't quite hold it. Sometimes you can get it up to four. It's, I can only get that violin up to 440 twice a year. And then the rest of the year, it just, you're a step low. It just will, that, that peg's worn out. I mean, the, the peg's 200 years old, people. Um, and uh, yeah, when he was, uh, uh, that guy, uh, Pat was, uh, yeah, Pat, Pat, Irish last name Pat, name name's Pat, probably for Patrick. Um, um, was looking at. I said, yeah. He's looking at the pegs. He's like, he goes, because um, I told him I said, but I have stuff low on it because, uh, which gives it a deeper, darker sound, obviously. Because I said the uh, the pegs, you know, that they're old, they don't hold. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, wow. He says, I didn't even notice the, all the stuff on the pegs. And then I pointed out and I said, yeah, but look at the engraving on that. So whoever made that violin 200, 150, 200 years ago, and he knew this violin. He said, that you bought that on uh, in Ottawa on Rochester Street. Eh? He goes, he says, I've seen a couple of these. And he go, I said, yeah, I said, I bought it from there. And the guy had two of them, and I bought this one, right? Uh, the other one's probably still there. If I had the money, I'd buy it too, if it's not gone. Uh, but this violin, I just love. I, I just, if I could get it, if I could get get it, uh, a pickup on it, and uh, do that, boy, tonight would have really blown people away, I think. Uh, I just think because you couldn't get the power out of it uh, to, uh, what, what was coming out of the monitors sounded good. It's just, there wasn't enough of it coming out of the monitors. Uh, so that kind of threw me off a little bit on the Evoluti song uh, for the... Um, you know, I couldn't quite hear what I was doing 100%. So, oh, little fox. Oh, look out, little fox. You get off the road, you're going to get squished. Must be a harvest moon or something. It's not a full moon. Oh, it's a yellow moon. It's a hunter's moon. Okay, that's why there's all these little rodents out on the freaking road. Okay, I get it. I get it. You guys, okay, it's a hunter's moon. Okay. Um... Some farmer's almanac stuff there. Uh, but anyway, uh, that said, for next week, I've got three mandolin tunes that I've, I'm ready to rock with. And uh, that'll be uh, Nemo. I think that one would have went over really well tonight. Definitely uh, Sweet Child of Mine would, would go over well on the mandolin if I throw that one in. If I can get Home Garden Beyond in there on the mandolin, I might save that one for another... Uh, another time. Tonight, if I would have uh, had the mandolin and only played um, my uh, tale, tale of Two Ships running into uh, Farewell to Nova Scotia, it would have rocked the place beyond belief. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Home for a Rest uh, would have been a great song on the mandolin tonight. It would just... Uh, Cowboys from Hell would have been a nice song to have uh, had this crowd out in front of that tonight. That would have been pretty crazy. Um... Some lovely ladies out there dancing tonight too. There's, that was sad. Uh, always like, I always love seeing people have a good time, especially when they're pretty ladies, you know, in the dresses and stuff like that. Uh, it was real fun. It was just so fun. Uh, Sing-alongs, dance-alongs. Not with me, but with other people. But the thing is, is uh, a lot of the songs I play, people don't know, but that gives them a bit of a treat too. So we had the Malaguena played tonight. We had death metal played on a violin. And heavy metal played on a violin in a pirate song. Uh, the Pirate of the Caribbean one, I didn't go too crazy on it. I kept it really short. I'm okay with that. So I don't think I got my 
I don't even think I was up there 10 minutes, you know what I mean? Uh, just because it was such a list, I really didn't want to hog, you know, the full 15 minutes. You know, I wanted to be on there and off there. Uh, you know, just be respectful and whatever. But I got my theatrics in there of introducing the songs. Of, the Rasputin song is so fun to play because, you know, yeah, there was a bit of a little bit of a la, 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 la. I couldn't quite get, keep them going, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, you know, you'll, you'll hear it on the mic or uh, on the, uh, the camera. But, man, what a fun night. What a fun night. I just, I, I love doing that so much. Um, the bigger the audience, the better, you know. Um, but yeah, the electric is uh, the next the next violin I bring out will have to be the electric, uh, just because I don't think like last last week's audience uh, would have been okay because last week's audience was a lot smaller. It was a good audience, but it was a lot quieter and a lot smaller. So yeah, you, they would have heard everything really well. But uh, this week uh, I was happy to play in front of an audience that big. That's the largest audience I've played in front of in a long time. And the people that were paying attention really, really liked it. Because it was different. And that's what I love about these jam nights. I know, I know uh, it's going to take forever to date to get a paying gig. But guys, I think a three hours of just going through, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a complete roller coaster for people when I do get the whole night to myself. You know what I mean? Um, and a lot of times what I hear... I, and, I, and again, this is what ha what happens when you go into a bar full of musicians. Anyway, is you 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 get to the point where it's like, oh, you, you're a multi instrumentalist, you know, like uh, you know people that have seen me before. They're like, yeah, I've seen you. Like every time I see you, you got something different in your hands. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, you know, whatever I can pick up. Some people ask me like, how many instruments do you play? You know, um, yeah, you know. And uh, there's a lot of people that are like that. There, you know. They, they, play multiple instruments but the violin isn't something that everybody can play so you get a bit of kudos for that even if you don't play it super 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 well uh but play the best you can tonight i try to play the best i can i try to perform the best i can and uh you know i can see the grins and the smiles on people in the audience it sounded like the rasputin song is a good song uh, I don't want to play it all the time because then it gets to the point where, yeah, people sing along and they dance along and they cheer and all that, but you got to give them something new. There's only so many jam nights I can do a season. Ooh. Oh, sorry, I thought there was an animal running out on the road there. Uh, got to watch my speed, you know. Uh, when it's a har uh, when it's a hunter's moon, harvest moon, hunter's moon. Um, yeah, yeah, you got to watch your speed because there's all kinds of critters running out on the road. But it was nice to talk to some musicians tonight a little more in depth. Um, when I was talking to Pat about the bazooki, and I was asking what tuning he was in, uh, he uses the Irish tuning, not the Greek tuning. Uh, the Greek tuning is more, more similar to a banjo. Uh, the Irish tuning is a, a D-dad, I believe, or dad-gad and D-dad kind of thing. Um, or similar to the uh, mandolin. So in other words, it's like playing an octave mandolin one octave down from that, like a, a double octave mandolin, right, so, uh, but I, you know, we were talking about, you know, like, to, uh, you know, like I said, I, I tried with my old mandolin one time, I played like a three hour, like I had a show, and I was able to play three hours, I thought, I'll see if I can do an entire step to three hours with just the mandolin, because the mandolin is a tenor instrument, and high-pitched instruments can get on people's nerves after a while or a bit droney, right? And that's what he was saying about the bazooka. He says, sometimes he says it gets a bit droney for people and whatever. And if you can't change tunings quickly, you know, it, it's like you're always in, a, in an open D chord. You know what I mean? Like, uh, whatever. And uh, I said, yeah, I said, I said, I find out with the mandolin too that you're always doing like an open string run, right? But I said, I started thinking of the mandolin different. And I said, it's going to be weird to think this way. But I said, when you're playing the mandolin or the bazooki, think in terms of a piano rather than a mandolin or a bazooki. It totally opens up a different dynamic. I've been doing that. And it like, how do, how do I put this? It's like, it doesn't sound like a mandolin anymore. Suddenly you're playing the piano. Uh, when I do... Um, the Nightwish uh, Nemo song, the beginning sounds just like the piano. 
it, and when I do the solo, it sounds like the piano's doing it. It's like not the like it, it, it's different. It's a uh, you're going to be playing more in fifths or whatever, but you're not just going to be doing open string runs, right? So you're not going to be doing the open chords as much. Um, and it's different. I did it last week with the, uh, what you call it, uh, Don't Stop Believing by Journey, which would have been a great song to be playing tonight. Um, the, the crowd would have been feeling it, right? Uh, but I did that one kind of like a piano. Last week, and it sounds very pianoish when you play that. You know what I mean? So it doesn't just sound like another blues grass mandolin. Not not that I'm knocking that at all, but what I'm saying is, it, it gives it a different dynamic, and people are not expecting that. So you can, you know, how how do I put it? Like it, when you play in a strumming pattern or whatever with the mandolin almost every song sounds like you're playing copperhead road you know what i mean that open d strumming uh when you're playing in you know with a different rhythm pattern more is like if you were bouncing keys off a piano and you don't you don't get that same it, it, it chops it up a bit more still just as full sounding and whatever but it no longer sounds drony. You know what I mean? It sounds more. Um, what would it, power chordy. It sounds more. Uh, it's a different drive to it, right? And that's kind of the goal. That's kind of what you're after. Because uh, you could look at it like like this: is that when you do it that way? Okay, uh, you can run into uh, a very easy flowing, typical mandolin run, right? And then bounce back into a more chopped up, but yet still within a key, still within rhythm, chord progressions that, again, sounds more like you're playing it on the piano to give it a different type of drive, right? And that's kind of where you really want to be at uh, to give people a different standalone instrument. With that said, yes, I would say tonight was a very big success for me with the violin. Uh, My best violining I've done. I can't wait to watch the footage. Hopefully it come out on the footage. You might hear more talking than violin and and you'll definitely hear, you know, I, I was trying to get my vocals powerful without completely overpowering the violin, but I think it blended okay. It just it didn't cut through in the mid ranges. Uh, the vi- the uh, mic, uh, which is weird because it was the mic that was used la- uh, not last week, the week before, and uh, it sounded great when um, that host was singing through it. I was like, "Wow, that mic's so good!" But tonight, it just seems like it didn't have any mids in it uh, that you couldn't get the acoustic instruments mic'd up with it. Maybe it's just a type of mic, like my SM58 does a good job on the mid-range. I think that, that, that was uh, a C40. I, can't, uh, I don't know if it's a Mitsubishi product. Uh, whoever makes it, they, whatever. I can't remember what it is, uh, 100%. But uh, the, the, the point is is that it's an, it's a, it doesn't see... It had great low end. It had okay top end. But it didn't quite seem to have the mid-range. Now, mind you, that could have a lot to do with the PA, uh, whatever. Where the other mics were a lot brighter than normal mics, uh, those SM58s uh, were very, very bright and okay with the... Uh, uh, okay. I find those mics actually make it sound like you're singing in a higher pitch because they're, they're a lot more mid-range. But that's, again, a dynamic of a new mic and, and whatever... Uh, it sounded good. It was great for singing. I gotta say, yeah, uh, it really that mic would be a great singing vocal mic. But uh, whatever whatever model it was, I, I probably wouldn't recommend it for um, acoustic instruments. Uh, the um, the uh, guy with the Spanish guitar, uh, the room had to hush hush for him because you couldn't hear like any projection in the mid range for that. And that's a flamenco guitar, which is 
pretty pinging. Uh, you know, they, they've got a, usually a nice mid range that cuts through. Uh, you know, they're usually bright enough, whatever. And yeah, it just it couldn't it couldn't carry the that mic couldn't carry the sound where you wanted it. So okay for vocals. Uh, not so great for acoustic instruments, but got the job done. I wish I'd done a little bit better on the Evoluti song uh, for the verses. Uh, the courses I felt good on, and the shredding part, I wish it would have just been a little bit louder. Uh, but that said, oh, what the hell is, what was that? Whatever you want to get the hell off the road, you're going to get squished. I think it was a deer. <laughs> Okay, I gotta reduce my speed here. Ah, there's a lot of rodents head on the road. This area is really bad for uh, speed bumps. <laughs> I'm getting what they call uh, what, where I call the pinball pinball alley, where everybody runs into deer. Uh, one thing though, I'm freaking starving. <laughs> I am so I'm so hungry right now. That's one thing when you sing with your full voice like that. Uh, it really, 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 like, yeah, you use up a lot of energy. That, that's, that's fun. Uh, I'm glad everybody had a great time tonight. I, I'm glad I had such a great time tonight. It's fun. <laughs> uh, I'm glad uh, somebody waited around to give me uh, an invite to a jamboree that I would have not. What the hell is that, crossing room? What is kitty cat? Get off the road, kitty cat. I'll squish you. I got squishy tires on tonight, so you just, you just, you just stay off the road. I, my dad, you all got death wishes tonight. Um, but um, yeah, like I mean, it was nice to meet people, and talk to people, and you guys know I'm a more of a social person than not. It was nice talking motorbikes and uh, Formula One and uh, uh, with that other guy. You know, it, it's it's just it's living. You know what I mean? But uh, this jamboree, if I can swing it, I will. Um, yeah, it's like, like I got my rent and everything covered for next month. Uh, it's just, I would like to get, you know, I don't know how much more work I have. And, you know, the YouTube thing isn't paying like it used to on my other channel for sure. Um, but, uh, like I say, it, it's one of those things that uh, you... You really want to meet as many musicians as you can because it's only a matter of time before somebody pulls me in uh, into their genre. And I think a lot of it is is that I'm a uh, unique in the, se in the sense that I'm never doing what everybody else is doing. You know, I mean? I'm the odd man out. Where back in the 90s when I used to play live, like everybody played metal, everybody played rock and roll or classic rock. Uh, you had blues players and stuff like that, but this is the opposite. Everybody's blues or folk music or whatever. Now, mind you, it could be just a venue, but um, I do like being the guy that, that could be the rowdy guy. You know what I mean? I do like being the guy. Now, mind you, I was probably the least rowdy, well, second least rowdiest guy tonight, simply due to the fact that I didn't have the, uh, the band behind me. I was very tempted to uh, do a, uh, a loose jam on the, uh, on the electric guitar. But I was like, nah, tonight's about the violin. So, uh, and trust me, the songs were definitely uh, party songs. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, what a good night. What a, oh, it's, I, I just love doing this. It charges me up so much, you know. It, it really does give me something. Um, you know, it, it's it's... Music is more than just a jam night. Music is more than just the instrument. It's really about the experience. Again, guys, I do this bone sober all the time. Um, I don't miss a thing. You know what I mean? I, I don't miss a thing when I'm up there. That means a lot to me. It does because... You know what I mean? Like, tonight, you know, like, just watching some other guy release a video. Like, a video. You know, and it's like... Seeing that video, it was called City Girl again, uh, uh, from the town of Wakefield. You know, like a guy filmed all around the town, driving around in his pickup truck and getting it, you know, basically on his way to the to the jam night. 
and uh, the lyrics, I can't remember the lyrics, there was a lot of hooting and hollering and cheering on the song. And of course, every time a local would pop up in the video, everybody would hoot and holler, and most of those people were there. Um, hence why there was such a big turnout tonight. But it was warm. It was really warm because it's like, I know that place, you know, and it's like, it's, just, it's like, I know, I know that guy, you know, it's like, it's, it's just, you know, it's like, it has meaning, you know, it's not like I said in my previous video where, you know, you get these cookie cutter songs that come in from uh, a music factory. Like they got it down to a science pretty much of verse, chorus, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, whatever it is uh, with the, all these uh, big record companies. That's why everything sounds alike. You know what I mean? Where when independent people go up and write a song, the formula isn't taken from some massive, heavily researched uh, formula that, uh, eh, what the hell is that on the middle of the road? Um, you know, formula that was, you know, some record company said, yeah, this is a winning, this is how you make a song, uh, you know, uh, popular. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the proper right around exact amount of bridges uh like rocking mystery was talking about uh, the millennial whoop, the swoop uh that type of stuff you know almost all the new music now does the millennial swoop it's just like doesn't matter what key you're playing in but that's the same little jazz blues everything uh, things become formulaic uh where it's like you almost don't have to know the songs uh you just say okay what what key in what mode right uh, you say, well, E-A-G with the millennial whoop, <laughs> you know, and, and people will know what you're playing. It's like, okay, so we're going to play Katy Perry's Roar or something like that. You know, that high-low, high-low type of thing. Almost like a chant, right? Uh, some people think it's satanic. I don't think it's satanic. I, I think it's just, it's a formula that worked on the pop, in the pop charts, you know what I mean? But you don't get that with these people that write organic songs, about their little town, their little village, stuff like that, and, you know, daily life, that type of thing. You don't get that from, there you get something completely, um, you know, it's it, its own thing, right? And that's what keeps it fresh and new for me, is, is hear, hearing the, you know, the difference in that, you know? And I really enjoy that a lot. I really, 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 really do. And the thing is that I also enjoy is um, the idea that, you know, uh, you feel a part of it. You know, it's like, even if you didn't write it, even if whatever, it's like, it's like you feel connected to it. And that's nice. And that's something I really want to do with this channel is get people in the mode where they feel connected to stuff. And what's this on the road? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought another little critter face was, you know, watch all these little fur faces running across the road this time of night. The wee hours of the morning. Well, I'm almost home, sweet home, anyway. Um, yeah, so I think I'll do the mandolin, go back to the guitar, then the violin again, if I can swing something. I have no idea what songs I'm going to throw on the electric violin, though. Uh, I definitely want to do three playing and singing songs. Uh, if I can swing a decent instrumental, I mean, violin, you know, it's not my main instrument, so you really got to work on that one. You know what I mean? To, to pull it off, you really got to work on that one. And tonight, I think I pulled off, I'd say, 80, 85% of happy with it. Because the volume was the only thing that was really not, wasn't giving the full effect that I wanted, right? Uh, so I'm not disappointed in any way. It was to be expected that an acoustic instrument isn't going to project. But it's more about sharing the instrument. You know, people asking... Uh, you know, uh, asking me about that instrument, you know, like, the, not a lot of people, but it was just like, wow, like a 200-year-old violin, you're brave bringing that out. I showed it to Jill. Uh, Jill was rocking the kazoo and the double bass tonight. She, she, she's a funny little, she's a funny lady, very good singer, whatever. Um, that other guy, well, there was two Robs on stage, the, the ukulele Rob, uh, and then there was the, uh, the the bass player Rob. He got up there and he, he was rocking out on the, uh, the, the stand-up bass or whatever very 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 cool um when i do a rock out on the cello that's going to be pretty cool whenever i can uh, rent one of those so the question for me uh becomes um uh one of two things 
the first thing it becomes is how you know uh you know how do i uh, plan out the rest of the season i mean we're near the tail end of july i'm probably only going to go into october with this and then maybe early november depending on the roads um whatever because i do got to save up for my winter tires like i mean cash is tight you know what i mean a life of a musician i know i'm, I'm you know ranting and whatever but it it really is what it is and in that sense the only things i could really do is plan out uh you know what's the next move what song i'm only going to get so many more songs until i get a paying gig but that said uh the thing i got to start working on you know as of tomorrow mind you i got to do other i got i got i got to still work on that knocking down that wall <laughs> at the gun range tomorrow uh and then friday i'm back to work again and then that means saturday which might be completely roasting hot uh do i chance uh you know like again uh how you know fund this project to go to this jamboree which i think will be great i i, I got to read the brochure cuz i couldn't really read it in there and uh whatever but i was really like that really flattered me when the guy said yeah he says i was i he says i i got to go but he says I, I i stuck around just to and i mean i was off the stage for at least an hour you know talking to other people and this guy stuck around just to make sure he says if you can make it out to our jamboree that would be great bring whatever instruments you want it was like a 20 dollar cover he says don't worry about it he says 50 bucks for the weekend or whatever but he says don't worry about it he says you're invited just bring an instrument you know we'll accommodate you i'll kick in the 20 bucks you know what i mean i'm i'm um when there's a good thing i like to support it uh it's uh it, it, it's it's one of those things that you know like uh life is short you know you got to make it good but just to see this new place and who are you going to meet and who are you going to connect with even if i don't do that much jamming like um you know i don't really care what i do in fact what i'd probably do is just go and say okay where do you need me uh i got no songs rehearsed or nothing i don't need the night to myself i just want to i want to sit in with the band uh because i'm gonna have to start doing that uh especially with the electric violin I'm going to have to start sitting in with the band as long as it's easy songs. You know what I mean? Uh, three chord rock type of thing. Okay. I'll sit in and I'll wail away on that. The mandolin, I could get a little more progressive with the mandolin because uh, I'm starting to be, I'm not a mandolin player. Uh, I, 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 I cannot be, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, disrespectful on that term because I play mandolin. I'm a guitar player who plays the mandolin. I'm working on becoming a mandolin player. So what am I talking about? Well, the same thing with the violin. I always tell people I'm a guitar player that plays violin. The violin players know what I'm talking about. The mandolin players know what I'm talking about. A mandolin player, um, when you hear a guitar player playing mandolin, they sound like me. doesn't mean I sound bad. doesn't mean I'm, I'm not good. I'm good, but I'm not a mandolin player. When Bill Monroe is a ba mandolin player. Uh, Marty Stewart is a mandolin player. Listen to those guys. I'm not saying the genre of blues grass, bluegrass or whatever makes them a mandolin player. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, you know, uh, somebody who dedicates it as their main instrument uh, that's doing uh, Vitali's, uh, uh, you know, or Valviti or something like that or Bach or whatever, uh, or the Malaguena, you know, somebody that can re is really pulling out some crazy um progressions and stuff like that and not just running open lines and and uh you know just a bunch of chords uh you know that you know playing a mandolin like a guitar or whatever somebody that's really working the instrument uh, when you hear a mandolin player beside a guitar player playing mandolin you'll know what i'm talking about the mandolin player will stand out because of the uh just the extravagance of it no again not that they're that much better than you it's just the style, the it's kind of like the nuance of playing a mandolin, uh, with thinking of it like a piano. Uh, again, you don't play it the same way you would just strumming chords. You get very creative and you bring in these nuances that just blow your mind, right? Uh, the violin is the violin, is the violin, is the violin. You really can't cross it over with anything else. Um, Unless you're doing plucking, uh, which um, 
plucking or uh, pensacotical, as they call it, is a very, very interesting thing. And we're talking Paganini stuff right now. But pensacato, I've I seen one guy just play the violin just pensacato, and that plucking sound, and it's like it's from another planet is the only way to describe it. And that's a violin player can do that. I can't. I can. I can do a couple of little plucks, but I, I can't do pensacato, a uh, pensacato, pensacato. However you however you say it, uh, the way it's meant to be done, or plucking. You know what I mean? Um, uh, it's like string skipping and plucking. It's it's a very very awesome technique. Uh, that's why if you could play uh, Paganese twenty fourth caprice, fifth caprice, and uh, first caprice. Uh, you're like virtuoso class, right? It, it's like, especially the uh, 24th Caprice, it's like the, if you can remember all the five minutes of all the different parts on there and play them intonated, uh, yeah, it might not be the hardest piece in the world to play, but it is one of the harder play uh, pieces to play. Uh, box, uh, what's it called? But anyway, the entire song is just intonation. And either you, to it's like 15 minutes long of playing every intonated chord you could play perfectly on on the violin. Very difficult. Just remembering all the parts without the sheet music in front of you is a feat in itself. You know what I mean? So yeah, those are you know people that are dedicated into those instruments. That said, the goal is even if you're not dedicated to that instrument, to make the instrument stand on itself. Where if you were to play it just an instrumental. That's you don't need a backup band. There's no holes in it, and it sounds good. Or you could play and sing along with it, and it just sounds like a full band there, even though there's just a guy singing and playing at the same time. And that's a goal. That's a goal. I can do it fairly well with the mandolin. Obviously, I can do it with the guitar. Uh, like I said in the previous video, when you do that, you have to rearrange things a little bit different so that they uh, keep flowing and they fit. But yeah, tonight was a fantastic night. I am starving. I got to go home, be quiet. Uh, thank God I uh, we had a pack of hot dogs today at home that had to be cooked up because my dad was out uh, kind of camping. Well, not camping, but at the Bears Den on the weekend. And he brought a whole bunch. Uh, some of uh, my brother's in-laws were up. So he had a whole bunch of hot dogs left over. So I barbecued a whole bunch, like 24 hot dogs today. And uh, my dad and I only maybe ate about 10 of them. So I'm going to have a little snack before I go to bed, maybe about three or four hot dogs. Probably not the best thing to eat before bed, but I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit sleepy too. I'm a little bit sleepy too. Uh, that was, it was a, a great night. That was an energetic night. It was so energetic. Uh, my face is sore from smiling. I'm very happy in the heart right now. And uh, I, I, you know, I love sharing this stuff with you guys, but Geez, guys, you know, find yourself uh, a nice little cozy spot like that and, and just get out there and socialize. You'll, you'll enjoy it. It's just nice to see everybody smiling and, and, and just enjoying themselves and dancing and, and whatever and laughing. And it, it's a break from the monotony of the, uh, you know, the, the, the darkness in the world. There's still lots of beauty in the world left, guys. Uh, don't let the media tell you anything different. Uh, yeah, you got to be aware of what's going on and all that stuff. But uh, I, I tell you, it's nights like this that just, it puts things in perspective very, very, very well. So again, I don't know who watches these videos this long, but I, I'm always happy when people do. I enjoy this so much. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to hit that jam night. I'm very excited about that. I'm glad somebody, you know, you know, thought I was, you know, worthy enough to, to jump up on stage with some, some other people and say, hey, come on over and check us out too you know it's a jamboree so i'll see if i can swing it if i can't i'll regret it i know it um to me my regrets is not okay i put myself in a tight spot because uh, i went and experienced something me it's the regret of not re experiencing something and it sounds like this is going to be a pretty fun thing to experience so um to be at a jamboree and and just you know and, and knowing that there's going to be some severely good talent there bring everything you know what i mean bring everything um so yeah there we go so there we go make sure you guys uh, hit that subscribe button and uh share like comment be true to yourselves be true to others always always do the right thing have yourselves a wonderful night eh